Hello, Will from 2035. If you make it to that year, um, this is a video about when Emmanuel, one of my friends from the East Coast who I met through Natalie, our good friend from Collage College. That's co- that's French for college. I met him once when uh, I think he was a part of like a teaching situation with Natalie. Natalie was a teacher when she first moved to um, New York City and now she's a therapist. And Emmanuel, I think, is still teaching and he loves his job. I think he teaches math to maybe... I think he said eighth graders, which is like, or seventh graders or something like that. I don't know. Honestly, scary work. He's doing the work of the Lord. (laughs) But Emmanuel came to visit me and uh, this was my time to show Emmanuel what Arizona offered. And so there's so many things here, right? And that's what I like about Arizona. That's one of, you know, a lot of people talk about what they don't like about it. It's hot. It's the desert. Blah, 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 blah. But what I do like about it is that there's so many experiences here. You can drive up north and there's snow in the winter, two and a half hours south and you're in Mexico. You can go hiking. There's lots of water sports in the desert, which is so interesting. And then there's also a lively young pulse to Phoenix, specifically downtown and the Arts District. There's lots of cool stuff. And I got to show... Emmanuel some of these things. So this is that video. So I guess I'd pop in to say, you want to be on this vlog? Sure. This is Emmanuel. (laughs) Hey, Uh, Emmanuel came to visit me from New York and we are here um, like skiing. I'm about to go skiing. You've been skiing before. I've been like one time. Okay. Does it really count? Well, it's my first time. Well, you 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 went snowboarding. You didn't go I skiing. Went snowboarding, yes. Okay, we're going snowboarding today. Actually, I said skiing, but we're going snowboarding. I think it's going to be easier. You said it would be easier, kind of. You think? I don't know. Theoretically, we'll see, yeah. I want to go skiing though too, because like I feel like that's the thing to do. But I'm like all geared up, girl. Got the boots on. This. Got the helmet. It's kind of tight. Did he help you tight untighten it? What? Did he help you like loosen it up or something? Is it loose all right now? Is this like? No, it's, it's fine. It's snug. Is it floating? Is it sitting on top of my head? <laughs> it's cold and yeah, first time snowboarding. Wow. Oh my God. We were so unprepared for how cold it would be up in the mountain because we drove up just straight like 20 minutes and the, the temperature dropped so much. I remember looking at the little temperature gauge on my car. It was just literally going down <laughs> as we were driving up and we got there and my hands were freezing the little gloves that i brought with me were not enough so there was a little store there at snow bowl which is this ski resort it's not a really resort it's just a mountain and you can rent gear there and things like that and they had some gloves there but the gloves were 50 dollars. like there was it was like professional gloves 50 dollars for some gloves i was not expecting to pay that but we needed it you need it and so we purchased fifty dollar gloves, twinsies. Yeah, yeah, we paid fifty dollars for some gloves because we brought gloves, but these are no match for how. Because we're t- super high up, we like drove up for twenty-ish minutes up a mountain, so we're like really high up, and the temperature drops like twenty degrees from the bottom of the mountain up here. I brought extra socks, the whole deal. My brain is getting in the way, but my, my body's fine. Um, <laughs> hey, Manuel, how you doing? I'm doing fine. <laughs> yeah, we got our nifty ski, ski instructor here. Hey, with snow, snowball. Snowball, snowball. We're at Snowball, I know where I am. Um, we just skied down this, or snowboarded down this hill here. It's not that steep, but we're about to go on the ski lift. Ah, we're gonna go up to the steeper hill. And uh, apparently we're not ready, but <laughs> yellow we're, gonna anyway. we're gonna do it anyways. This is the snowboard. It's a little difficult, but um, it's fun. She's getting the hang of it. Yeah, we're getting the hang of it. It's hard to just like even uh, like move a little bit when you're not actually skiing. Like yeah. getting your body, like if you're on the ground, just like scooting over for a few feet is like so. It's a, it's a lot of work. Yeah, we out here. <laughs> oh Emmanuel's a little afraid of heights, but it's uh, getting higher. It's getting steeper and steeper. Oh but we're on the lift. We're on the ski lift. Hey! Yeah, it's like getting. Yeah, okay. 
a little. It's going, it's going down. Steep up here. Oh, thank God. It's going down a little bit, yeah. <laughs> but we are wet up oh, here. This goodness. is so sick. I enjoy this. Like, I like this. Like, it's kind of funny. It feels like a ride at Disneyland or something. But, um, Emmanuel, so look at that grip. <laughs> that grip. No, nah, look. This is crazy. This is kind of crazy. But I'm having fun. Yeah, I'm a little um, worried about this, like, steep hill that we're going on. Oh, God. Why is it stopped? Oh, it stopped. Enough. Turn it back on. I guess it's just like hooked on there and the rope is moving. Yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah, the rope is like on a chain. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, engineering. He told us we weren't ready for this hole, for this steeper hill. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, no, he gave us a choice. He was like, we can go back up the hill. We just uh. came down. <laughs> we can hike up the hill that we just came down because there's a conveyor belt that um, goes up this little kiddie slope that we're on um, but it's broken right now so he was like we can hike back up and I guess that didn't sound that good to us and so we were like let's just take the lift up to the steeper hill which was op option number two but then when we got to the lift he was like I don't think y'all are ready for the, <laughs> for the steeper hill look at this little kid they like little kids out here just busting snow, like gliding straight. Another thing was that my allergies up there on that mountain were bonkers, bonkers. The worst sneezing sensation. Like, oh, I'm about to sneeze, I'm about to sneeze. I was just holding back a sneeze. And I know sometimes I remember when I was younger, I used to hold back sneezes and I would bite my tongue or go like this so hard that the insides of my lips would be sore and numb. <laughs> and that was happening on top of this mountain. So I was sneezing. I had snot just coming out all over the place. My lips were also so chapped and dry. And there was nothing I could do about it because I couldn't just, I couldn't go back to my car to get my chapstick. Even if I had my chapstick on me, it'd be hard to open it up, take my gloves off, open it up, reapply it. So that's just something you have to like bear or I had to bear. But I guess you too, if you're watching this, because yeah, my snotty nose and chapped lips were all up in your face. It's not snotty anymore, it's not chapped anymore. Um, but that's also part of the human experience is that sometimes your nose leaks mucus. <laughs> sometimes your lip skin just chafes off. So that's just what it is. And so whatever, this is Will Unedited. I just busted my face straight open. I need chapstick. But I went down this hill. Right? And right now I'm on the conveyor belt. <laughs> it looks so silly. But um, I went down and I was like picking up a lot of speed to the point where I was like getting scared. And I probably got snot coming all down my nose, but I was picking up a lot of speed, but then I was like, oh shoot, how do you stop? The front of my board caught the snow and I fell straight forward, like flat on my face. And everybody, <laughs> I fell right through the snow. There was people coming on the, up the conveyor belt and they looked at me and they were like, oh my God, are you okay? I still have melting snow all up in my glasses and my beard. I think if I learn how to stop, I will be good. It does get scary when you go a little fast because small movements make a big difference at that point. So you have to keep a, like a good center of gravity and really control the board. What the heck? How are people doing this though? Girl beats me. Okay, so I downplayed the fall. I was going so fast and I fell straight onto my chest. My chest broke the fall. So imagine falling straight forward as you're going down a hill on a like sideways on a snowboard and there's no friction between your snowboard and the snow. So you're gliding straight down and you're going so fast and you kind of turn and your snowboard catches the snow. It kind of like leaves a dent into the snow and like skids a little bit and that skid propels you forward and you hit the ground with your chest and it's just a big boom right onto your chest and it like reverberates through your body and you just fall straight into the snow and the snow is just all over your face and it hurts so bad and you get kind of um like I feel like I could have gotten concussed I should honestly have gotten that checked out I felt such a deep dull pain that I immediately thought oh no I broke something I broke all my chest like <laughs> whatever 
whatever bones can be broken by hitting your chest, I broke them, sis. And everybody was looking at me. So I was like trying to get up, catch my breath because it knocked the wind out of me, literally. I was like, <gasps> and it's hard to get up on, on snowboard. I literally have to learn and train to just get up if you fall down. There's like th two or three different ways. You can figure it out, but there are easier ways to get up. And so I had to like remember the steps to like turn my body around. And I got up and um, I thought I was done for the day. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna go to go, have to go to the hospital. It was so uncomfy because I was wet and I was cold and I had just like maybe broken something. And one thing about the snow is that it absorbs a lot of sound. So you can't really hear much. If I were to yell, hey, help, oh my God, you would hear it, but like in the distance and it would sound maybe like the wind a little bit. So I was afraid for it, all of these things, right? Falling, one, falling and then screaming for help and nobody hearing me, two, breaking something and having to, having to go to the hospital way up in a place that I'd never been. I don't know where my insurance card is, girl. I should have brought my insurance. But yeah, that was like a really scary thing. And that's why I'm like nervous about going back skiing. I want to go skiing again or snowboarding and I want to learn how to ski as well. One of the scariest things about it is truly the corporeal danger that your body is in. Like you just have to practice a lot on the kitty, like the little slopes. Don't try to like be a superhero and go down the hills before you're ready. Cause that's fun as well. It's just practicing. It's fun as well. Falling and dying is not fun. So. Emmanuel was a straight up pro. Emmanuel was just like gliding down the hill. It was so funny the way he was just chilling on the board and <laughs> going down. He had not one bit of fear and he tried to teach me a little bit, but I was truly over it. And I, at the end of it, just was watching him do it and filming him. This was, this was his day to be honest. <laughs> Okay, the sun is setting, so I'm gonna use this light real quick. Ooh, oh, did not mean to look straight into that. Um, we went to the Grand Canyon after this, on our way back from um, Snowball, we went to the Grand Canyon, which I think was a little bit more north of Snowball, so we went further away from where I live. And um, there, what you find at the Grand Canyon is that, one, it's beautiful, it's spectacular, it's an amazing experience, and the reason why it's an amazing experience is because it is just, nature it's like just nature there's not much right actually that's kind of a lie right outside of actually capitalism has gotten its like grippy paws onto it it is a national forest or a national park so there's like a little there's a store there and there's like hotels and whatnot like right on the ridge you can like book a hotel which is weird but it's not camouflaged right outside before you go into the grand canyon there's a maybe a 45 minute drive up into the park but right just outside of that before you go in is mcdonald's that is mcdonald's is the grossest facet of capitalism to me almost because they will stop at nothing let's get our production costs down to pretty much zero and then let's make get that profit margin up they don't care about what there's kind of like mass production means for the world and the implications of that and so anyway we can talk about that forever but just the fact that there's a mcdonald's literally just outside of the national park like they inched up as hard as close as possible on purpose because when people are going into the national park there's not much food in the national park that is, there's like limited options. And so people leaving the park or going to the, the park are obviously going to want to stop and get McDonald's if it's available. It's helpful that food is cheap, right? That food is cheap and easy for people to get. Also realizing that McDonald's as a corporation does a lot of gross stuff. Outside of the Sagrada Familia, across the street, McDonald's, KFC, all, like it's just the fast food restaurants and it's American capitalism in Barcelona, like anywhere there's like a big monument or sacred lands or just things that we want to not be touched by capitalism, McDonald's is right there. But what makes it a good experience on the inside of the park is that that stuff is not allowed. There's no McDonald's, there's no Chipotle, none of that has like ruined the kind of experience and like left a bunch of trash everywhere. So trash, unless it's recyclable, you can't 
trash it there. You have to like take it with you. So you have to carry around your trash. So I had this banana that like I couldn't throw away because it was compost and it wasn't like recyclable materials. And so I had to carry it around with me and I took pictures with it because I wanted to remember that I, that that was the case. Cause I, I didn't really think about that the last few times that I went to the Grand Canyon. I think this is my third time going and it, yeah, there's no trash cans anywhere. I always show people if they come visit me, the Grand Canyon, it's like the first thing we do. It's ginormous and there's so much to see from the different vantage points and we walk a lot. So that's like tiring and then you have to like drive all the way back home. So you get home pretty late. But we had a lot of fun. We took some pictures. Some girls like took some pictures of us because they were like, oh my God, we're such a good, like, they really gassed themselves up in terms of photography. They said that they were models and that they knew how to take pictures. So, and these are the pictures that we got. <laughs> Girl, either we weren't modeling or they were just lying, sis. We, um, we took these pictures also because we thought it would be a cool picture. We saw other people taking this picture but, and we thought, oh, we won't have all these people in the picture. But we took the picture and literally you could see all the people. It was just whack. Usually I go to the Grand Canyon and it's either really cold or it's really hot. But Emmanuel came like for spring break. So it was like mm, the end of March and it was perfect weather. So love that. So usually I wouldn't come on camera like this. I feel like I'm coming on here like I'm sick, but my skin is wilding out right now. And I think it's because I just spent like a week outdoors pretty much. Like I went skiing and I'm at the top of the mountain. So I'm closer to the sun. I've just been at the Grand Canyon and it was so sunny there. I was using sunscreen, I think. Yeah, I was definitely using sunscreen, but it just wasn't enough. I w didn't have it with me all day, so I wasn't reapplying really it. And so now I have, like, I don't know if you can kind of tell, but right there, my skin is peeling. I also have this sty coming in. It started off as a bump, and now I'm like, okay, it's getting inflamed. So there's that, and then on this side too, my skin is kind of peeling. Oh my God, my nose, like my nose is peeling. So I don't know, God, I'm just like in rehab mode. Like, I don't wanna go outside, I'm using my sunscreen. I'm gonna try to figure out what um to do for this sty. I know like people do ice, and whatnot to reduce inflammation but maybe there's some kind of cream or something i can use also just heard on the friend zone that dustin suffered this thing called blepharitis which is like bacteria on the eyelid and like his eyes closed up i i'm like and i was like nervous about that and i feel like I'm, my body's like manifesting this this dupe of that because of how nervous i was about that 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 could happen to somebody <laughs> i was like bacteria on your eyelid no ma'am I also just spent a lot of time, like I've been wearing these, my glasses a lot because I've been getting headaches. Cause I edit it a lot and I'm constantly staring at it. <sighs> Girl, I just woke up, literally just woke up. I'm staring at the computer screen a lot and I need blue light glasses. And so I picked up a few and I actually just lost a pair and they were so expensive and I really liked them. They were a hundred dollars. I'm so upset because I don't even know where they would be. I dropped them somewhere, they're somewhere. Anyway, um, dang, I need to figure that out. I lost my train of thought. I lost it. I'm gonna wash my face and I'll talk to y'all later.